Hi, thank you for joining me. Really appreciate your time. Another repot of an Oncidium. I've done several so far, but there's a difference with this one, and that is it has a seed pod. But I need to go in anyway because this Oncidium has been in this pot at least three years, if not more, and that is far too long for me. So seed pod or not, we can at least follow whether it's going to make it or not. I have to repot this. So I'm not expecting anything dramatic. I expect this to be just a general regular repot. I'm sorry for the background noise. A lot of cars going in and out of the community behind the hedge. I appreciate your patience and tolerance levels with this. Now, I do have two new growths coming and I believe there's two pieces in here. For me, the only thing is I want to be able to document, is it possible to repot an orchid, well, an oncidium that actually is working on a seed pod and be able to tolerate the disturbance. And I'm quite happy to say that the mess in here isn't so bad. The cleanup will be a bit complicated, but we have some pretty, pretty roots and that is what this is all about. There are ones that are falling off easily in the center. We'll have to cut those off and I'll have to decide if I want to separate the two pieces. I do, in a way, want to do that if it's easy in any way, shape or form. But other than that, fine roots. So I'm just going to try and figure out which clump of roots I can take off in one go being mindful of hopefully not taking off too much of the good stuff. But you can see that it is a little bit more difficult with this one because the root system looks good, even though these ones back here are white, they're bad. So not to be fooled, not to be fooled. Look at that, this root looks absolutely fine, but it's not. So that's no difference here. We can't determine just by looking at them. Now I do want to keep my lacquer cleaning to a minimum actually, but this is not as easy as with the bigger roots to determine which one is viable and which one isn't. I'll put up a timestamp when it's time to pot up and for anybody else who wants to watch, I shall try and find some pretty music while I fiddle with my Oncidium, which has probably been identified, and I'll put the name of it up on the screen, by one of the viewers. Thank you very much. I will try and make sure that I put your name up as well to say thank you. I do have two pieces now. It wasn't two pieces initially, but I did cut the rhizome 
because I wanted to position them in such a way that they grow for me pretty much in one direction. And having said that, you know what? Cutting a rhizome even on oncidiums can trigger a growth in the back. So I'm gonna be mindful of that. And as I position the pieces back in the pot, I'm gonna take into consideration that possibly the back part will generate another new growth and pot them up somewhat in the middle. Seeing as this root system is so, so vigorous, I wanna show you something before I pot them up. I allowed myself the luxury of taking off all these long branching roots right at the base because the roots were failing at the base by the pseudobulb, but still managed to grow and extend into the pot. So that is a calculated step that I took because this root system is so vigorous, I don't have to worry about it that much. And it was off the piece that didn't have the seed pod. I'm going to put in two microfibers once again. I'm going up a pot size. So I'm going from a small 15 centimeter pot to a medium size 18 centimeter pot. Two microfibers grow back in, seeing as these oncidiums are quite thirsty. And very small leka is going in the pot and not the mixed size that I had many years ago. Now that I've separated my leka out, it's become quite the luxury. I'm also filling the pot with plain RO water to give the roots a kind of a flush after being cut. Don't really want them to be touching any fertilized water. They've had enough while they were soaking. So let's get into position and let's put the two pieces into position and see what we're up against. Let me see, seed pod piece. Don't fail me. I'm also not putting in a loop. The roots are gonna be pushing the loop down. So that's kind of no need to go there. Let me get you maybe together outside the pot and then figure out to get you into the pot together. Comme ça. That would work. That would work nicely, methinks. There we go. One's a bit higher than the other. We don't want that. So I'm going to have to reposition my right hand and grab hold of the pseudobulbs in the back to keep them level. And I didn't cut any of the old pseudobulbs off. I want those storage organs because if it triggers another direction of growth towards the back, that'd be perfect. I'm gonna turn this one a little bit more towards the center of the pot because of that growth. I don't want it facing that way, a little bit more centered. The two of them can meet and then maybe the spikes won't be all over the place. And I should be very interested to see if I get another growth coming out the back on one of the pieces. So I'm just gonna hold the pieces in place and fill up the pot with lecker. Let the beads fall where they may at this point. I have a lot of nice warm breeze to go. The rest of the day is gonna be really good temperature wise. So I'm not concerned about all the water you see touching my new growth. Here in my climate, that is the one luxury I have this time of year. I don't have to be so, so careful. They will dry out very nicely by the end of the day. And even if they didn't, the nights are balmy and warm now. There's always a breeze going. This orchid now lives outside 24 seven until such a time the temperatures drop to 12 degrees Celsius. But everything regarding the new growths will have dried out by the time I finished and has set it back into its place. Now, let me just give it a little bit of a jiggle. I just wanna hold these in place because I don't want them to be moving around too much. I kinda like where they are now, a little bit lower in the pot. I'm gonna help with the water just to 
settle Lekka where I want it. You're a bit big. Don't want you in here. Uh oh. Let's get this pot out and see how the Lekka settles before we put some more in. Maybe, maybe. Do we need some more? Um, if we scoot it around, it might just do the trick. We don't have to add any more, I don't think. There we go. So, flushed with clear RO water. And I think that's going to be good enough. Let's keep those new growths a little bit towards the air and cover roots that are used to being covered so that they don't fail on us. That is my Insidium taken care of. Now, fingers crossed that the seed pod won't abort, that the roots it has left will be able to sustain what it is trying to do now, new growth as well as seed pod. Fingers crossed. And until this Insidium has absorbed the entire reservoir, it is now filled with RO water and only then will I go and put in fertilized water. So fingers crossed that this is going to continue to progress. Thank you very, very much for watching. I know that all repots look very, very similar. I personally per love seeing repotting videos. So based on that and based on the seed pod, I decided to film this in case somebody also was looking forward and wanting to watch another repot. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate having you here. Have yourselves a wonderful day and please, please stay safe. Take care. Bye.